The way you use UWorld can either make or break your USMLE Step 1 score. That's why it's really important to be able to use UWorld as efficiently as possible. In this video, I'll be telling you how you can use UWorld in the best way possible. Now I understand that everyone prepares differently for USMLE Step 1, but the way you use UWorld is super important. There are some certain key principles that you should be following when using your UWorld, and in this video, we'll be covering all those principles so you can use UWorld as efficiently as possible. Also, I want to say that if you want to follow my journey throughout residency, or you have any questions about preparation, feel free to add me on Instagram at Dr. Chala. Also, if you found this content helpful, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can produce more videos to help you out. So the first thing you should remember, every IMG should do at least two rounds of UWorld. Your first round is a learning tool, whereas your second round is an assessment tool. Yes, you should use UWorld as a question bank where you learn how to apply your clinical knowledge, but you should also use it as a textbook. UWorld contains a lot of information that's not present in other resources, and therefore it's important for you to go through UWorld and take all this information and consolidate it all into one place, and in this case that's first aid. The second round is where you use it as an assessment tool, where you can learn to gauge your knowledge and also work on your question strategy, and we'll be getting into that a little bit later in this video. So to do this, you should do your UWorld in tutor mode and system-wise in the first round. This is important because you want to do UWorld in a way that it's easy to annotate into first aid. Now, the the most efficient way to go through first aid is by going through systems just because you can also do UWorld and systems. So let's say you do cardiology and first aid. Then you can do cardiology and UWorld so you can assess your knowledge, learn how to apply the theory that you learned in first aid, and also write all the information that's not present in first aid from UWorld. Now I made a separate video that describes how you can fit your UWorld into your study plan and that will be in the link right here. Now your second round of UWorld is where you do it timed and random. Now it's really important to do it this way because you'll learn how to apply all the knowledge that you already gathered in your first round and you'll also work on question strategy. Question strategy is key. Basically, no matter how much you study when you write your US only step one, you'll only know 60 to 70 percent of the knowledge. It's up to you to use question strategy to try to bridge that 20 to 30 percent knowledge gap by making educated guesses. Now question strategy is quite the broad term and there are a lot of things that you should be focusing on to improve your question strategy. First is the way you approach your questions. When approaching the question, try to read the last line first and then go to the rest of the question. Now I'm gonna explain this with an example. Now in the question, they might say a 32 year old male comes to the emergency department with tearing chest pain that radiates from the chest all the way to the back and that there's difference in blood pressure between two arms. Now while reading this, you're gonna be trying to evaluate and realize that this is aortic dissection, but maybe that's not even what they're asking for. Maybe later in the question stem, they already mentioned that it's aortic dissection and they want your next step in management. So the ideal way to approach this is to read the last line which says what's the next step in management. Now you know what you should be focusing on. Then you can read the options to have a better idea of what the question is asking. Then you can start reading from the top. Next thing you should focus on is to practice reading the question. Now you shouldn't read the question word to word because this can waste a lot of time. So taking the example that I just mentioned, instead of reading that a 32 year old man presented the emergency department with tearing chest pain, you should be able to skim it. So when you read it, it should be something like this, 32 year old man tearing chest pain radiating to the back, unequal blood pressures. So you can cut out all the fluff and focus on the pertinent information to the case. Now remember, all of this does take time and practice, so don't expect yourself to be great at it at start. For me, it took me halfway through my second round just to get comfortable with this. Also, some people like to spend a little bit of extra time to highlight these. And while this works for many people I know, this personally hasn't worked for me just because it takes a little bit extra time to sit and highlight. But if you do find that this helps you, try to focus on this from the start because you want to be able to to minimize the time that it takes to highlight and do it quick to save time. Next, you have to focus on elimination early on. Now, what do I mean by elimination? You're gonna have four to five options and you're gonna have to eliminate the ones that don't make sense. And this takes practice. Now, let's take an example. There's a 16 year old that presents with chest pain, but in the options you have MI. So you should be eliminating that early on. Like this, slowly over time, you get better and better at eliminating until you get to the last two. Now, how do you choose between the last two? Well, there's a certain method that I use 
used from my U Assembly Step 1 and it helped me during my preparation. Whenever I got a question wrong, I used to categorize that question into three categories. Now the first category would be if you don't know the information at all. And this is purely due to that knowledge gap that you lack. For this, the only answer would be to brush up on your topics and learn the concepts. Second, try to make sure if it was a silly mistake. Now when I say a silly mistake, it could be a variety of reasons. It could be whether you read the question wrong, whether under pressure you weren't able to look at the options properly, you marked the wrong option. And these are basically the questions that you got wrong, but they are avoidable. Now remember that everyone's gonna have these just because you're doing these questions against time. So under pressure, you're gonna have to skim through and there's so many times that you're gonna just miss the options. Third, you wanna see if you followed your gut and that led you to the right answer or not. Now while you're doing your world, you're gonna narrow the options down to two or three options. But sometimes your gut is gonna tell you that one thing is the right answer, but you overthink and you change the answer. Now after you get that question wrong, you wanna see if your gut was the right answer or you overthinking has led you to the wrong answer. Over time, you start to see a pattern and see that you changing the answer leads you to the right answer or your gut is the right answer. And later, while you do your practice tests, you go with that. This is the formula that I use to try to improve my question strategy and to see what the trend was with the options that I was picking. Next, you want to get into the mind of the question reader. Now, what does this mean? Every question has a right answer. And the person who is writing the question wanted you to pick up on certain tips or know certain concepts to get the right answer. So try to see what the question writer was trying to hint for you to check. Now, this is easier said than done and it takes a lot of time to develop but the more you try this the better you get at it you want to focus on presentations now let's get back to that aortic dissection example where i said a 32 year old man comes with tearing chest pain that radiates to the back and there's unequal blood pressures on each arm when reviewing the explanations of each question i also want you to go back to the question and focus on the way they presented it because this is one method that they can present it in the exam remember every symptom has a certain explanation or a reason behind why why it came to be. So when trying to go through the explanations, try to understand why each and every symptom came to place. Most of the time they'll give this in the explanation, but if not, I would definitely suggest taking a little bit of extra time and going and checking this up online to see the cause of each symptom. Now let's get to flashcards. A lot of people like to make flashcards during UWorld and it's a great method. It's a great method to make sure you actively recall what you don't know and strengthen your weak areas. But this is why you should only do it in your second round of UWorld and make flashcards cards in your second round of UWorld. A lot of people like using Anki, which is a great resource, but they try to use it during your first round of UWorld. But in your first round of UWorld, you're in your consolidation phase and you're learning all the concepts. So essentially, you really don't know anything. So it's a waste of effort to spend a lot of time on focusing on making flashcards during your first round. Because if you make your flashcards in your second round, you're essentially making flashcards in the topics that you're weak at. So try to focus on not making flashcards in your first round. And if you do want to make it, make it in your second round. Now we talked a lot about question strategy, but how do you build your question strategy? This mainly occurs in your second round of UWorld. If you don't do questions every single day, it's easy to lose the grasp of doing questions. And this is why I suggest you to do two blocks every single day. Now, because this is a long preparation and it's a marathon, not a sprint, you're gonna have days where you don't feel like studying and that's okay. But I really suggest that you do two blocks of UWorld every single day, even if you're tired in your second round, just to make sure that you actively keep up with your question strategy. We don't want you to build your question strategy and then it drops and then you build it again. So the max you reach is that plateau. And it's easy to fall into the trap of wanting to learn more information. So a lot of times people divert from UWorld and focus only on first aid, saying that they want to grasp their theory better. But I still believe that you should definitely try your best to do two blocks of UWorld every day. Now, the only time that I believe this is acceptable is before you start your second round of UWorld. Before you start your second round of UWorld, you wouldn't have started building on your question strategy. So it's okay to take a break and read a whole reading of first aid before getting to your second round. Now again, this is optional. I preferred it because I figured I could use my U world more efficiently, but it depends on the time you have to allot and the time till your exam. Remember, don't get discouraged by U world scores. In the first round, it's a learning tool. So no matter what, you're not going to do well. There are people who get 30 or 40% in their first round and they still hit 240s or 250s in their exam. A lot of people ask me that their scores are low in their first round. What do they do to improve? Don't worry. It's just a learning tool. It's a textbook. And even in your second round at the starting you're not going to get a good score because you're still focusing on learning the information so just remember that during your second round over time your percentage is going to get better and better i remember at the starting of my second round my percentage started at 65 to 70 percent or sometimes even 55 to 60 percent but over time that got better and better and better and by the end i was scoring anywhere from 80 to 95 percent in my euro blocks don't do a lazy round of uworld now some people want to do a first pass of uworld before they're serious dedicated and say that 
that I just want to get familiar with the questions. But this doesn't work. Your second round of view world is very important for you to build question strategy. But if you do a lazy first pass of view world, then by the time you get to your second pass, you'll be using it like your first pass and you'll be using it as a consolidating tool. But then you're going to have to use your third pass as an assessment tool. But by this time, you already remember most of the questions. It can significantly affect your preparation just because you won't be able to focus on question strategy. Also, try not to get lazy while doing any questions. So while doing a block of 40 questions, especially in your first round, many people do 30 questions really well by annotating and learning the concepts and they get lazy in their last 10 questions and they don't annotate that. Now the problem with this isn't immediate, but you will see this in the long run. Now when you do your second round of U world, you don't want to focus on annotating. All you want to do is focus on reading the concepts and then reading first aid. And I talk more about that in this video right here. So please check that out of how to use U world and first aid in your dedicated study period. But now if you didn't do your first pass properly, you're going to have to sit through each question in your second round and see if this is the question that you missed and you didn't annotate. So make sure each time you're doing UWorld, you're actively thinking and actively annotating into first aid. Now remember, if a topic is tested more in UWorld, that means it's a high yield topic and it's asked more in the step one. So you don't want to be lazy over these topics and say, I'm going to learn them later because that will harm you in the long run. If you do get tired or burnt out while doing a block, I really suggest that you take a 10 minute break or one hour break. This is much more preferable than just finishing off your 40 questions for the day and just relaxing. Every second you spend in your world can be a second that's spent to learn. Not everyone follows these principles and sometimes it's okay, but if you focus even on a few, over time that becomes second nature and you can focus on more. And if you're in the middle of this prep and you haven't used these principles, then it's never too late. But remember, make sure you do two passes of your world and the way you use your world is very important. Now if you found this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this in the future. And if you have any suggestions for any videos that you'd like me to post, please leave in the comment section down below. And while you're still here, check out some other videos on my channel. My videos are aimed to help IMGs with the entire USMLE process and help them match into residency. Good luck.